All right, we're back and ready to go with another premier matchup. Both of these teams completely undefeated with Epic Memers on the blue side and Stanford's Broken Sticks on the red side. Nar taking away, once again, such an annoying top laner, followed up by Ramus, who has an amazing win rate and high elo in the jungle, a really dynamic and new jungler who just emerged after the last Worlds is very good. Now we have Cinder going away. Another very strong assassin kind of mid laner. At the same time, very AP. It's great for most team compositions. That being taken away does kind of shorten the champion pools of a lot of mid laners. Let's see how they want to follow that one up. Um, no bans towards the bot side. I expect to see maybe a um, few things towards uh, <laughs> the Heimerdinger ban is real. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and assume it's a serious ban and that's. Uh, a focus ban. Either that or they are banning everything that was OP in early season 3 in bronze. One of those two things. And Swain. I think Swain is actually a legitimate ban here. Uh, we have J4 going away as well who's been played so much so far in the tournament for him to now be taken completely out of it. See what the junglers are going to resort to. Ramus gone as well for that uh, position. Looks like we're going to have Orianas be the first lock in. Epic Memers have used Oriana before to some great success. So a decent pickup on the other side. We have Caitlyn being hovered. I wouldn't be surprised if they were to show their bot lane right now. Just get some decent picks and get prepared for a very strong bot fight. Janna, a little bit of a weird matchup to Janna and the Caitlyn. It does work. It allows Caitlyn just absolutely dominate that lane with that long-range poke. I could see that working out, and they will lock it in. It's going to be interesting to see if they play that perfectly. It can be easily countered. All they need is to have some very high aggression, maybe a Thresh. Even a Leona would work in this scenario. If they want to sustain, Nami could go great, and then an aggressive support. Someone like the Graves or the Lucian just have tons of damage and go right in on top of them. And it's something that I would not be surprised to see Epic Memers run. Both these teams completely undefeated. Um, last time we saw them, Stanford's Broken Sticks took away Tower Dive Gaming, gave them their first loss, who are now still alive and in the finals of the loser's bracket. They will play whoever loses this game, and that section will be a best of three. This right here is a best of one still. Busty Senpai hovering over top of the Graves. I'm not too surprised. That's the kind of ADC I would think they'd want to react to the Caitlyn Janna lane with. But not going to lock that in. The Rumble Humber Hover as well. Rumble, last time we saw him, such a dominating force in this game. It's going to get locked in along with the Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix has been hit and miss, but overall, if you know how to play him, you can make him insanely, insanely useful for your team. I'll have to wait and see how he's going to play that one out. It could very well be a top lane Kha'Zix, but I highly, highly doubt that. So where's Rumble going to go? Galio being hovered on the other side. I have seen some amazing Galio play here at OKG before, so I would not be thinking that's any kind of a troll pick at all. It can work very well in both the support and the mid lane. You just got to work around that ultimate perfectly as a team. Wukong will be insta-locked in here at the last few seconds. Could be going towards top, could be going towards the jungle. I'd expect the jungle Wukong notoriously bad in the top lane if there's ever rotation of lanes. In the, two, in the 2v1, he just gets dominated no farm. That's not what you want to be risking. When two teams who are very capable of making that kind of rotation, especially with the Rumble already picked up here, the Rumble can easily survive in a 2v1 lane and just have the Wukong top bleed out and have no CS. It would be 100% worth to rotate that. Now blue team forced to pick and show their bot lane. What are they going to go up against with this Caitlyn Janna? It's got to be an aggressive ADC. I'd be really surprised to see something that would be passive. Yeah, the Lucian, the amount of aggression along with Nami that's gonna work really well allow them to have some sustain Lucian with that Nami E is gonna have so much damage 
and they will lock them in. Great pickups there. I'm really liking how the composition for Epic Memers is coming through. And Jace will be finished off for Y-Grid. <coughs> That's interesting. The Jace can be so insanely powerful. You see a Jace run away and just start getting legendary, and no one can stop that guy. He's going to keep it going and just dominate an entire game. They're really going to focus on having a lot of pressure towards what I would assume to be the mid lane, actually, because he does not have the teleport that is being given over to Galio, who I'm going to assume will be going top in this scenario. He has done very well in the mid. I've not seen him go top just yet, but if you're going to have somebody go up there against the Rumble, it might as well be Galio. He's going to have that AP resistances that you're going to want against the Rumble. As well, if you go and gank Rumble and you get that amazing ultimate from Galio, it could be an easy kill on a very important champion. Kawhi Chan will have to watch out. Taking a quick look at the summoner spells, we have top lanes going to go with each of them with a teleport and a flash, assuming the Galio is indeed top. We also have the ADCs going with their basic flash and heal. We got the supports both going for the exhaust flash. The mid laners will be taking a little bit of a difference. Assuming Jace is indeed in the mid lane, he will have the ignite with the flash, and Oriana will just be taking the barrier and be a little bit more defensive. A wise choice against Jace. Jace, a very dominant laner, and they're going to have to watch that one out. Oriana could lose a lot of farm playing that safely against Jace. It will be an important matchup. And the junglers taking the smite flash will likely be showing up in that mid lane a lot. Or there will be some very passive mid laners that will be looking for roams to get their kills as an alternative. Overall team compositions, we do have a very good team fight coming out of blue side with the Oriona Shockwave, the Equalizer coming out of Rumble as well. You're going to have Lucian doing tons of damage with those crits and all the resets on the Kha'Zix as well as the Nami Wave for that secondary CC to back up the Oriona Shockwave and the Rumble Equalizer. I've actually seen this kind of team comp already. It may very well have been from the Epic Meters early on in this tournament and it worked outstandingly you just cannot do much against all of that aoe then the resets from kha'zix come in thanks to the immense amount of damage from lucian it is hard to deal with that much damage coming at you from every single angle and i really don't know if the composition on red team is going to be capable of handling that you've got the caitlin who's going to stay very far away as well as jan who's going to be able to power her up but was jan really going to do the disengage there is so much go in and kill you coming out of the blue side Wukong as well does have some engage, but again, disengage with the Nami is <laughs> just a lot of options, but this amazing composition on Epic Memers, I gotta say, Broken Sticks will have to be on the top of their game. I do think their ace in the hole will be Jace. He can completely obliterate every single member of the blue team from the side without even having to get too close and just annihilate their health bars and allow him to be the dominating force and completely remove the team fight aspect by removing most of the health bars before the fight even really starts. Talk about some poke from one champion. Since we're talking about compositions, let's take a look at the red side. How would they want the team fight? If they get the money Galio ult, it could be a game changer. But besides that, they don't really have all that much of an all in. They've got the Wukong. But when Wukong goes in and ults, as Galio doesn't have his ultimate or if he's already used it, he's not really getting much backup. That knockup's only going to last so long. Caitlyn can only do so many auto attacks in that time frame. You've got to be looking. If you're on Broken Six, you really want to have Caitlyn be insanely fed. I would not be surprised to see Wukong going to war the bot lane, which would work quite well considering the fact that Lucian and Nami should be very aggressive in this lane, pushing Caitlyn in, making sure she's never feeling safe. So Wukong might see his time of day in the bot side. All right, we're just about out of our delay time. We'll be starting to load onto the rift. I will be right back.
All right, we are just about back onto the rift. Just be waiting for the final little bit of loading. My eye is going to be initially right onto Kha'Zix. Where is he going to go? We saw Wukong is going to be almost forced to go towards that bottom lane. So that will allow Kha'Zix to have a little bit more roaming pressure. He might want to focus on the mid side. Jace to get fed would be a problem. And Orianna might be getting pushed in a lot. I would expect to see Kha'Zix in the mid and Wukong in the bot for the majority of the early game. See whether or not they follow what I say or if they've got their all new plans to themselves and whether or not there will be any kind of odd lane rotations we could very well see from these two teams. Making my matchups. So you're in the top lane. He's walking over there. Down there. Lucian, you're not in there. you're not a jungler. You're not okay, I missed that. Oh, you go there, okay. I fixed it. We're good to go. Looking at the basic starts out here, we have Galio going with the <laughs> Doran's Ring. Very common start from him when he's going for a little bit of damage. Rumble Axe is going to be taking up that Ruby Crystal. As well, we have the mid laner of Orianna be grabbing that Doran's Ring as well. Longsword going over to Jake's. Doran Blades going over to the ADCs along with their little bit of pots. And we have no three minute wards on the supports. We are just going to be looking at the pots. Trinkets are ready and going, and we are on a wait period. We'll see what's going on, and we will be right back with that little bit of information. A summoner has disconnected. Looks like we were just having some minor technical difficulties with Jace. He has DC'd and he will be back as soon as possible. While we are waiting, let's take a look at where everybody's positioned. Actually, I'm not going to say that because in a couple of minutes it'll actually be live. I wouldn't want everybody to know where the other team is positioned. What they can see of is that both teams looking to get those aggressive wards out. Some wards are on top of the same bush. And it doesn't look like nobody's going too aggressively so far, but they've just walked into the area, so we'll see whether or not anybody wants to try and make a level one play. Composition-wise, neither team really have a very strong level one. You do have the Nami with a bubble would do wonders right out of the gate, and it could be a play to be made for the blue side, but do they really want to risk it? They do have an amazing team fight. Instead of risking their early game, it might be safe for them to just try and get through the lane phase and have a very, very strong grouping stage. Looks like we are about to go live, so everything that I am seeing would be actually seen by those in the pause, so I will stop talking about anything for the moment now. We are just turn on a little bit of music, wait out this pause time, and hopefully Jace will get reconnected in no time flat. Be right back.
Just having temporary sound card issues with Jace's computer. He will be back on in about three to five minutes. We'll get back to you shortly with more on that, and hopefully the game resume. We'll be going back live as soon as everybody is ready and able.
and we are about to get going finally after that very long pause we have resumed sound card issue has been resolved jace is back in the game we are ready to go it looks like after that insanely long pause both teams do not want to do anything fancy level one is going to stay and take their bottom side buffs jason a bit of an opposition right now it's going to be a little bit far to the top side of the map waiting that one out with galio so we will not be giving any much of a lead shouldn't be mad too much for wukong but once again, we got to focus on these junglers. Where are they going to go? Because Kha'Zix, as we said, could easily go just for that mid lane, trying to get the advantage there, get rid of the really aggressive Jace. Whereas Wukong might be forced down towards the bot lane. Lucian and Nami are going to be able to push that lane in really hard if they get the aggression they need to down, which will happen around probably level 3 when Nami has all three of her abilities to help support Lucian in his aggression. As well, Lucian will have all three of his abilities to get that passive proc off as much as possible. waiting for that buff to spawn and this is some very passive level one play for these teams not even gonna ward the area he's just gonna wait for that buff to spawn kind of a gentleman's agree agreement to not do anything fancy level one jace looks like he's good to go in that mid lane showing 1v1 against oriana and we will wait to see what's gonna happen in these lanes i've got to say galio he's a common pick for canadian but really, is he going to work out that well against a Rumble? You cannot blow that lane. Rumble is going to be too big of a deal later on if he gets anything in the early game. So Galio is definitely going to have to show up and perform here. Both have TP this time around. So Dragon is not going over to any team easily. Jace, with that early aggression we were talking about, that is going to make it so that Kha'Zix has to go towards that mid lane. Might be a little bit rough for him though because his bot lane is not pushing forward like he, I would have expected him to. They've got to wait in that level 3. They don't have level 2 yet, which is really hurting them at this point. We'll see, so roll the bubble is going to land as the dashboard will get the double proc. He's looking for that Q afterwards, but he'll get exhausted first. That is a summoner spell for nothing. Great aggression and amazing corner bubble there by Nami. This is a very interesting top lane. They are just standing right next to each other, doing no damage. Galio, what a great counter onto the Rumble, but here comes Kha'Zix. He wants to get on this one. The TP is going down. There is no lockup. They're going to try and kill him quickly, and they will. Rumble with the first blood. That is a risk not worth taking, and that will go immediately over to the Rumble. Samuel on the Caitlyn. Caitlyn is already out of mana, something you'd normally expect to see 100% happening to Lucian before Caitlyn. She's just not able, she's just not being able to get off those passive pokes, and it's allowed Lucian to slowly take over this lane. He is now even in CS as well, so I'd be very worried for the bot lane of Broken Sticks right now, as they are forced to back. There goes Kha'Zix, looking to get on to Jace. Find a little bit of damage, but Oriana really cannot back him up. She's got no mana, so Chase with an easy hammer smack away, swatting the bug out of his face, and he will be able to return the lane, or Oriana will actually probably be forced to back quite soon. Try and stay it out, though. This could be a bit of a risk. They are going to have to watch and see whether or not Oriana can really continue risking this one. Kha'Zix is going to stay around trying to gank. And again, this is exactly where Kha'Zix is going to have to focus. Busty Senpai really wants Wagred dead. Wagred a little bit too aggressive now. He's going to use the hammer for the Here's Kha'Zix knocking back Oriana. He's got the Ignite going, but there's the barrier. It will force the Flash from Jace, but there's not going to be anything picked up onto Jace as far as kills because Oriana did use barrier just enough to counteract that Ignite. Here in bot lane, we actually do have Broken Sticks able to re-aggress themselves. It's a neutral lane once again. They've got to clear out that wave and even up the CS and then try to find a way to use Caitlyn's Oh, to start aggressing this lane because Lucian is right prepared to take over with the advantage of having already gotten the pickaxe. Here on the top side, Galio maintaining his CS lead despite being down a kill. It has allowed Rumble to kind of maintain the lane, but you've got to be worried. Galio has done the job he needs to. He's putting Rumble on a leash, and if Rumble isn't able to bounce back quickly, it could be a problem for Epic Memers. Re 
return to the bot lane will immediately land a bubble. Here goes more and more double frost from Lucian. He will even get them from the W, but they cannot aggress after the cargo net, forcing Nami and Lucian back underneath the tower. But there is basically nothing left to sound. As Kha'Zix comes in, he will land a W, an amazing hit. Here goes the leap. He already used the isolation, and here comes Rufam on the other side. He's going to need to dip that down to the Lucian, but an easy heal is going to turn that one right around. The heal is going to be enough to allow a kill actually for Rumble, teleporting and using that flame to get the last minuscule amount of damage onto the Wukong. Almost unfortunate. You would have liked to see that one go over to Imminent, immune to death on Lucian. He would now have control of this lane absolutely with that kill. Only with one assist, though, it is so easily contested by the bot lane of Broken Sticks. Nami already deciding in the back, took way too much damage there by the Wukong. And again, I am so shocked to see that TP actually go through. Galio taking a couple turret shots to the face, as now with him not teleporting, the drag control shifts to the red side. Looking back over to the mid lane, a 10 CS lead will be immediately emerging here for Jace. And this is the kind of control this lane we expected him to have. It is going to be insanely difficult for Orianna to do anything with that kind of poke damage. A lot of from the auto attacks, and then the Buster shot is going to dominate. Here's the knock up, another bubble onto Samuel, an amazing play as he will go down very quickly. Gianna can't do anything. Nami actually picking up that kill with one last little bit of an auto attack, but it is worth to pick that up. Another assist for Lucian. And the bot lane is just not working out. I said as soon as they picked in the Caitlyn Janna, any aggressive lane would be able to turn that one around very quickly. And a Nami aggressive lane does work if you're money on the bubbles. And these bubbles have been money in the bank. Janna staying in CS range could be a little bit of a risk. Sorry, experience range could be a little bit of a risk. Might take a lot of damage for it. Might force her even to back here. that one passively out up in the top lane. Rumble trying to regress himself into the lane. He's down a lost CS. Speaking of being down CS, Oriana going to use that shockwave in the mid lane. Trying to run out Jason. Here comes Kha'Zix. He's got the Q. The slope from the W. Flashing for the Q. He'll get a good amount of damage down. Allow Oriana to finish that one off. Her blue buff will allow her to regen and stay in this lane a little bit longer. Maybe regain some of that CS loss after she clears out this pink ward. Taking a look at the builds, the Brutalizer already completed on Jace. He does now have a death, but it's going to be easily counteracted if Orianna can keep getting a little bit more defenses, start building up, and allow herself to have so much mana regeneration she can just span dissonance all over the place and gain control. Janna going to try and steal that away from Kha'Zix, who's invading on the red side, but it's not going to be enough. Janna's not going to pick that up anytime soon. Kha'Zix is going to secure that invade. And there does not look like there's going to be any way for Broken Sticks to counteract that one. Epic Meme is showing why they're undefeated. So is Broken Sticks. But in this case, it does not look like they're giving their strongest game for the first game of the day this Sunday. More farming going down up to the top lane. And I got to admit... The lanes that have the kills here, Lucian not having any kills, but Lucian is winning the lane regardless. He has the CS leap. The kills are actually counteracting for Epic Memers the loss in CS. There's a loss in CS for Orion, but it's only by nine, so he's got one kill. Two kills on the Rumble, and he's getting dominated. It's working out fairly well for them. As Orion will get dived on by the Wukong, but the ult's not going to be enough as Rumble's there with the Equalizer. He's going to turn that one around here in the bot lane, though. We have a lot of damage coming out on the Nami wave. We'll allow Lucian to secure another kill onto Samuel. He's not having a very good game. As Busty Senpai will secure another kill from mid lane onto Wukong. There's going to be no follow-up by the Galio, and this is a little bit of the problem. He has a lot of ability to control that lane, but he's got no ability whatsoever to get that alt down without his flash. And though it was up, there was no way he was going to do that in a 2v3 scenario. We're going to continue to aggress onto Jace because he does have causes for the backup. He will get swatted away by that bug swatter in Jace's hands. And it will be enough for him to flash to safety as Janna going to hold the lane so that Caitlyn can get some CS. She certainly needs it. Being down by 12, this 6 would help immensely, but Janna's going to be taking a minion wave beating for it. Jace here in the mid lane, low on health, but he is able to be alive enough when there is no pressure at all from the enemy team. He will get a little bit more CS I'd expect in the back as soon as this wave is clear and Oriana shows. And there he goes. 
return to this bot lane. Will try and take away all the towers. CS, he's doing a decent job of it. Trying to maintain his Orianna. Going to show up just late to find, try and find Jace and clear out that way for herself. She is down, going on towards 20, a bit from that for now. But she is definitely losing to CS. That one kill and one assist will allow her to actually have a momentary gold lead <laughs> of 300 in this mid lane. Down the bot side, more aggression from Lucian is going to allow him to retain control of this lane, but Caitlyn's not having any of it, taking away half of his health bar. Nami's sleeping over on the side. She really wants that, that ward placement, but Lucian's taking insanely low. There's no follow-up by Nami. Missed the bubble. Here comes the double TP from both Galio and Rumble as the equalizer goes down to three. Amazing equalizer will allow for this almost to be completely pointless Galio up because both Jen and Caitlyn have to go completely away as there goes Galio over to Lucian. Now here on the other side, Caitlyn might actually die to that burn and she will bust the Senpai. Gonna pick up another kill as he gets the reset so he can jump on over to the Janna. Now he jumps into the very regrettable jump into the tribe, but we get a double kill on to Jason. Hits Nami from underneath the tower. Lucian is gonna focus onto that tower as Wukong is given to Rumble in, Rumble in the trade. Orianna yeah. returns to the mid lane. She's got no mana. She does have a little bit of sustain, so she might be able to stick this one out, try and close that gap and get a little bit more gold in the pocket. So far, only one turret goes down. That is the bottom wave turret, which was just incredibly fought over and given over to the epic memers thanks to Lucian's decision to stay and focus that instead of chasing the very dangerous Jace to the jungle. Speaking of Jace, he's currently sitting at two and one. He's got the brutalizer and he's got the tears, so he's gonna start being very effective. If he can complete a couple of items before he's completely shut down or his team is overrun, he might be the force that's changed around these team fights. Let him poke him down, then you go into the engage, using the Galio ultimate to displace any damage from the blue team so you can turn that around and allow Caitlyn to still be relevant in the fights because of the amount of CC that would be going onto the enemy team from Galio and the poke going onto them from Jay. Right now, Caitlyn's in a very bad scenario. She's got the Berserker's Graves going and a pickaxe. That's basically next to nothing. Even if you look at Lucian's build where he still has not finished that BF, but he's got all those Doran's Blade and he's got the rest of IE in his pocket ready to be used with that BF. Here in the top lane, Rumble continues to aggress. He's actually got enough kills now that his gold lead is surpassed over 500, so he can aggress on the Galio despite a little bit of a counter. He does enough damage with the penetration from Nanji's Torment to be very relevant inside that lane. Split push will no longer be a problem for Rumble. In this dragon fight, though, we do have no teleport from Galio or Rumble. It's a bit more of a big deal for Blue Team because Rumble is such an amazing dragon fighter. And so they're actually going to try and concede this one a little bit. The bubble will land on the Jace, and that's going to force both teams to both say, I don't want to risk this one, and I want to defend our turret. But it's going to go down very quickly, so that'll be a free turret going over the Epic Memers. Pick that one up as the tornado on the back side is going to knock up Nami and Oriana, but they would not be able to follow that one through as Galio's solo pushing onto the top lane. I do not know what happened to Rumble. Oh, he is down here preparing to take this dragon. They've decided to trade the top of our turret for the dragon. A decent trade overall because they're inevitably going to end up getting with the split push of Rumble being so fed, he will get that outer top tower fairly easily. So by taking the risky objective of the dragon, they are securing more overall global gold for over time. Weak is going to land on the two and there's going to be a clone that's going to hit by the entire calling and the shockwave. So they a lot of the damage down for the blue team. They know they're going to try and quickly secure this one. They do. Janna now going to use the monster to block off Rumble and cause it's inside of the dragon pit. Rumble's going to try and re-engage and go down first. The dragon was secure, but it's going to be traded for one kill and one tower. It's almost worth for the red team, especially considering how far behind they are. No, well, I gotta be thinking right now, with Roa already finished on the very well-farmed Galio, he is still insanely relevant despite being 0-2. His gold lead is non-existent when it comes to Rumble, because he is down by 2 300 but it is enough after the global book is equalized from these other side objectives, he's gonna be very close to Rumble, and the split push is gonna become very difficult. He's got a lot of penetration Rumble, so he does not have very much flat AP, and he's gonna have to start building for the team fights instead of for the split push, which means Galio could be a little bit split push step, but once again, it is a Galio. How fast is that guy really going to push? His abilities do cost a good little bit of mana. The Roar is only going to be able to counteract that by so much, and his auto attacks are certainly not there for Wave Clear as Galio spots out Oriana. Wukong going to back away in his own general sweeping it for security. Always a wise thing to do. So many sweepers coming out of these teams, and I love it. That's exactly what I want to see in these 5v5 scenarios. 
Pink Ward will be cleared up by Busty Senpai. A very usual bush for Pink Ward to be seen on. Uh, everybody always wants to see him to have one Pink Ward over in that side by the Baron. There's only a little three or four places to put that. As now Janna going to be caught in a little bit of a bad position, but he does amazing tornado will allow her to get away from that one safely well in the top lane. Galio going to defend his turret against two. Kha'Zix and Rumble are not going to be looking to dive on such a tanky target. No major rotations going down for other teams so far. I would mildly expect to see at least the Epic Memers try and make an aggressive rotation. They don't have that big of a gold lead, only coming out of around 3k despite such an amazing kill lead, even turrets, and about even side objectives. It's all right now about the first team fight that's going to occur. There was such a great team fight from the Rumble, Oriana, and Nami mix on. Uh, epic memers. I really think they have the advantage. They've just got to utilize the fact that Samuel is basically not in this fight. Caitlyn's going to do no damage. She's going to be sitting in the back and you don't really even need to focus her because compared to the Infinity Edge on Lucian, she basically has an advantage. Comes out, it's going to do a lot of damage, but the big target here right now is that Tsunami. It's going to find four as the first kill goes over to Lucy. He's going to find a double kill onto the Janna as now Galio's in a bit of a bad position. He's going to try and cut away as Jace picks up the first return kill with the shock from the far range. Caitlyn now in a bit of a bad position. Her ult's not going to do that much damage as Lucy's trying to chase that one through. The distance will speed him up, but only for a little bit. He needs that reset on his E. He's going to get it fairly soon. He's about one second away, and he will use the dash into the cube. He's going to back away from the amount of damage these turrets and minions are going to do to him. He's actually in a bit of a bad position. Caitlyn could try and utilize this to return a kill, but he will walk away pretty safely. Caitlyn aggressing with very low health. Might be a little bit of a risk as Jace is on the side. He's going to try and poke down some clean kills on the Lucian. He has very low health. Now he flashes away from the Kha'Zix, who is there to completely cut him off. He's still level 10, so he doesn't have the second evolve yet, as the Bud Swatter once again will get rid of Kha'Zix. He's trying to find Lucian on the chase, but he's not going to see anything as Lucian is smart enough to stay away. I really don't know why you would bother sweeping the pink warded bush. Maybe that's just me. Blue buff, regardless, though, will go over to Jace. They're managing to finally secure their buffs, and it looks like this pressure from the blue team is being relieved fairly quickly. Epic Memer is going to have to find a way to reassert themselves, because Broken Six is using their vision control of their own jungle, which has just now really despawned, to regain decent positioning and team fights, and never get into a situation where they're going to lose major objective because they lost a skirmish. CS across the board standing fairly close with the sole exception of the top lane where Rumble right now is actually going to be staying only four or five hundred ahead of Galio at any given moment. Sending Caitlyn to the top lane against the Rumble is definitely a risky decision. She's definitely much more of a, of a tower dive target from the Kha'Zix. So I don't think they're worried about it right now at this point because of the fact that Dragon is under a minute away. It would be risky for Kha'Zix to do exactly what he's doing right now. Caitlyn is alone in this top lane and he's now going to get dived on. They have to do it quickly so they can get back around and make the counter rotations for the side objectives. Kha'Zix is going to flash when he gets hurt. They'll give that one away over to Kawai-chan and that is exactly what you want to see. Rumble now a bit more fed and have a bit more gold and they can easily get this final elder turret and gain complete control over the first tier of the map. Galio's there, but there's nothing he can really do at this point. I mean, he's not going to go and flash for the ultimate. Even if he had a decent amount of backup, they're just going to try and trade the turret. But overall, this is going to be a decent trade for the blue team because now they can make the rotation back over to the dragon. Whereas normally, the rotation for the bot side turret was so much easier to do with the dragon, whereas top is not. So with dragon now up, the harder to get turret for a team, which is normally traded for Dragon, is now secured and Dragon will be a full-blown 5v5 contest as Lucian and Nami are there to secure the area so Blue Team can catch up, get their backs going, and get into the final 
fight for this objective. Kha'Zix is in the area, so he will be able to jump and contest. I would not be surprised if the Nami wave come up very shortly. They don't even have vision. This is very late. They've got to make some kind of a play. And it's going to be picked up by Wukong before they can do anything. I really think that that is a huge mistake for Epic Memers. They should have had control of that objective. And now with that gone, to see the gold lead, rather, is really becoming minuscule at this point in the game. They've got to regroup, get a decent team fight, and use this amazing composition that they've built in one of these objective um, contests. They've seen the dragon go. They didn't go in. Nami could have tsunami. Kha'Zix could have jumped in. Rumble would have been there immediately with the equalizer. It would have been a very easy fight to win, but just because Orion was a few steps behind was not really a justification to give up that much global gold. I gotta say, they must be regretting that decision. So far, it does seem like that despite the fact they've had the lead throughout the entire game, still, Epic Memers are a little bit afraid to pull the trigger. They've got to get a little bit more in depth of saying, we're going to go in now, we're going to kill them now. Because Samuel on Caitlyn is just not in the game. The bot lane has been completely removed. 0-4-3 and 0-2-3, they're just not very relevant. Because of that, you only have to really worry about the Jace, who could be easily eliminated, targeted out with your team fight comp, as well as Kha'Zix being a decent dive assassin could go straight onto the Jays. With Lucian, it'd be an amazing way to burst him down. Then Wukong's gonna go and counterattack. what? He doesn't have any backup. Galio's only gonna be able to have one source of CC before he becomes nothing but a little bit of a sponge. So the team fight overall is going to go over to the blue team. Here they're looking for a little bit of scrimmage. They're going to get a good bit of damage on the Janus. Now Wukong's going to use his ultimate to try and turn this one around. And Janus is going to use the Monsoon. But here comes the Nami, which is going to find the first kill over to uh, Lucian. But Galio on the side will pick that one up very quickly. It's a 3v4. Truly becomes a 5v5. As we now have everybody in on this one. Rumble's there alone. He does not have the equalizer. It's already been used. He will get a couple return kills. But overall, it's going to be a perfect ace over to the red team for three. This is exactly what you don't want. They didn't know where Jace was. They went for the aggression onto the wrong targets. They had the Wukong and the Janna. Those aren't fed. Those aren't worth much gold. Now you've got feed onto the Kaelin. You've got more feed onto the Jace. And this is a completely even game with under a K, or sorry, around a K of a gold lead. This could become even more of a detriment if he manages to see this inner tower. It's going to be the first inner tower to fall. It's going to be able to live thanks to the calling. But Jace with some amazing plays. He's got the double buffs. This is the exact threat I was talking about earlier on. You've got to worry about this Jace. Kha'Zix was not able to generate that many advantageous scenarios for Orianna, And then slowly become the detriment of the team. Orianna, though decently well farmed, still completely lost that lane to Jace. You look into the top lane. Rumble only manages to keep any kind of even gold because of the fact he went completely elsewhere to get anything. Galio had control of that lane, he had control of the farm, and he still got a six over 60 CS lead. In the bot lane, Lucian's the only lane that really won for Epic Memers, and he was not able to take advantage of that because Galio erased him immediately after he got the first kill onto the channel. Over at their own blue buff, they will secure that yet again as the game is now basically even. Only a 1k gold lead, as I said earlier, separates these two as Orion Distance going to find absolutely nothing but an empty pitch. You didn't even know there was somebody two feet away. Or, if you would prefer, half a Teemo. Okay, three quarters of a team. Let's be reasonable. He's a mile distance. We have a, a little bit of a bubble miss there by Nami. She wants to show some aggression, but at least now Jenna has to back off slightly as Galio and Jace are going to back up. Jace is going to look to use that big shot from a range. There it is. The power slam is going to hit right to the back of the fish. And it will not be enough to engage on anything. And now this is the part where I do not see it going too well for the red team. The red team managed to find a decent fight in the jungle. It was very disjointed. They managed to eliminate the back line with Jace. But in a lane fight, are they going to be able to beat this Oriana, Rumble, and Nami mix-up? If they have their ultimates, because right now they absolutely do, they're going to win the fight. They just need to go in. They just have to finally decide, I'm going to pull the trigger. You put that ball on cause to get in there, use that equalizer, use that wave and you're gonna have all of them erased before you even have to realize that Caitlyn forgot to use her Q. There goes a turret though and they're continuing to walk away with the passive as Caitlyn doing a little bit of damage onto their backside. Where's Lucian? He's defending the bot lane kind of. He's backing and taking the long route and doing so and the obvious rotation is just go for the Baron. If they rush this out find that pink ward and just take it down as fast as possible. There's not much they can use to contest it. This should be the only chance 
So there will be to have Rumble use a perfect equalizer. Get that guy to teleport his arse in there. You've got a ward in the area. Put it, it's over, it's right over here. Put him on that ward. Teleport in there. Get that equalizer down before they get this dang Baron. They're finally there contested. The Baron is already gone. It's going to be a 5v5 with Baron up on one side. It's now Buzzy Senpai is in a bit of a weird corner as the entire coin lands onto the Galio. Orianna not having the very shockwave will have Galio flashing. He's going to get his ultimate on the two. Is now Blue going to pick up the first kill and use aggression onto the back line as we already have one member being caused down for the blue team. Blue team going too far forward. Will get immediately exhausted. That's what you get for using an aggressive E. Now we have Nami trying to pull away, but she's going to take a ton of damage, not letting that bubble shield go down as well. This is what it takes to be a fed Jace. Yagrid is doing this perfectly as Orianna's shockwave was not very effective whatsoever in that team fight, and the very composition of Epic Memers has completely fallen apart. That is the scenario they're supposed to absolutely dominate any kind of fight. They didn't pull the trigger once again by the time they finally had managed to squeeze it through. They completely missed the shot. They lost half of their team members. They lost the Baron. They've lost the gold lead. They've lost their first in their turret. This is just detrimental as they're going to lose another turret. Kaylin gonna be backing over by the red buff. Didn't think she wanted it because she's already got one from that last fight. Right now, Kaylin's seen at 3, 5, and 6. Looking at the gold, she's got 8,300, whereas Lucian still has a 1,500 gold lead on her. That should be the differential maker. You've got to protect this Lucian while using your ultimates. After Rumble uses his ulti, what's he really going to do? Use his flamethrower? Sure. So he can go and he can do that. Or Yana can use the shockwave. Then she should be defending Lucian. Nami should use the... The Tsunami, then she should be defending Lucian. Lucian, so far, the only time we've really seen him go into the fight was where he eat forward, got exhausted, and died immediately. That is not what you want to see from your ace in the hole. As the Dragon going to go over to the red team, and now their gold lead expands over 3,000, or right on 3,000. Now looking for the engage, we have a bubble gonna land on absolutely nothing. The shockwave will find four. Where's the fall of equalizers? Right on top of the four of them is now Bussy Senpai already going down. Lucian's on the backside, he's still gonna be able to deal damage. What a crit there as now Rumble going down as well. Followed by Janna and Wu Kong. It's a two for two as Galio's limping away on this one. Lucian is still on the backside, but he is full health, but so is Jace. It's a battle of the carries. No. Jace cannot find his way back into this one, so Galio's just gonna go focus on that turret. He's still alive. It's a two for two trait, but really the advantage goes over to the red team because they're gonna get another turret. Jace regrouping with the three as the others go back to heal on the side of Epic Memers. They're gonna want to do everything they can to prevent any damage really going on to this inhibitor turret. They should just go for a fight here. They have causes already respawned. That's exactly what they want. They gotta slow down the Jace. He's gonna miss the W though. The crits from Lucian doing a ton of damage, but there's no follow-up. They need to slow him down. That was a huge miss on that W. Jace now gonna use his hammer smash onto the golem to try and get away. As Rumble's on the backside, thanks to the teleport, gonna slow some people down. Immune to, immune to defeat is gonna be able to get one kill on the Jace. It's a huge shutdown for him there. As now Caitlyn gonna try and run away. Kha'Zix is on the side. He should be able to jump and use that slow once again. There's the slow it will land onto the both of them, slowing them down. But here comes Wukong and Janet. They're going to completely turn this fight around. No ultimate for Wukong just yet, as he will still pick up the Kha'Zix with the burn from the... Uh um, from the Elder Lizards of the Nami, gonna hit the wave on the three on the back lines. Lucy's is gonna get a little bit too far forward. If he gets caught out, he's gonna go down. Now Rumble's in a bit of a bad position. The double will land onto only Janna. Now Caitlyn gonna go down thanks to the equalizer from Rumble, who'll get a double kill. What an amazing turnaround! Not only Oriana is remaining. The shockwave is available. She's gonna use it with dissonance. It's not gonna do that much damage. You got an AP resistant. Galio, and you've got a very well shielded up Janna. You're just not going to be able to kill Zoom's out, so she's going to have to back up, regroup, and once again defend her own inhibitor turret. This is a very quick turnaround by Broken Chicks. I did not expect this game to look like this five minutes ago. Wygrid is going to go take his blue buff. 
And this is where they're funneling all their resources. The 727Js, he's sitting on 12K gold compared to Orion's 9K. It is an absolute domination. This is what you want to see from a Jace. I said in the initial game, their ace in the hole is going to be the mid lane. And he's played it perfectly so far. They're going to have to focus him down like they did in that last fight in order to turn this one around. Epic Memers still are in this game, absolutely, because they have not lost an inhibitor turret. The wall still stands. The gates are far from open. In fact, they're very well reinforced. They've just got to keep their wave clear up and start using this wombo combo appropriately. They did it once, but they didn't manage to get Lucian in to do the extra damage on the side, so it did not result in very many kills because of the very tanky lines of the red side team. Broken Six as well really wants to just ag aggress at this point in the game. Galio is huge right now. Wukong is huge right now. Jayce is absolutely huge right now. And finally, Caitlyn is back into the game. This is what you want for the red team. It ends here. Calling going to go out. It's going to find the entire side of it on the Galio. I don't really know if there's any damage. More like the cuddling at this point. So we're going to have the waves quickly cleared out by the blue team as the siege will continue. Janna on the side trying to get some decent whirlwinds in. A little bit of poke from Galio. Most things are missing here so far. It looks like Kha'Zix the level 11 went for the upgrade on his Q, so he's got the reset on his wings, and then he's got the extra isolation. He's not really finding any isolation whatsoever, so he's having a little bit of trouble in these team fights. Obviously, with those W nerfs that were fairly recent to Kha'Zix, it's very difficult for him to try and upgrade that one. Is another distance will miss from Orianna. A slow on the Caitlyn will be enough to get an ebb and flow and not much else, as most of the buffs are sitting on the side of Broken Sticks. Rolling to go out, not going to find anybody as they continue to try and wave clear this one away. It is definitely played very passively. It's going to be up to this next team fight. This will be where you're going to want to turn the game around if you're on Epic Memers as well. It's where you're going to want to close the game out, get that first inhibitor if you're on the side of Broken Sticks. And once again, it's so hard to pull that trigger, but these power slams, man, just ripping through the blue team. They're going to go get more buffs. They're looking over towards the now completely respawned Baron. This timer should be assumed by the blue team. They did not see Baron actually die, but they saw right when they got it. So they should have put that timer down. As Janna going to get a great knock up here, they're delaying any invade onto this Baron. It's already been taken. The calling going to find the entire side of Janna taking her to half health. It's not really going to matter. She's going to have that Baron buff. As now Orion in a bit of an opposition going to try and get away. Blue Kong's an ultimate onto both Kha'Zix and Lucian with an amazing position. As Caitlyn's trying to help him out with the ultimate. But here's the real thing is the ulti from Galio is going to find four. A ton of damage coming out there. But only one kill is secured by Jason to the Kha'Zix on the side. Blue Kong's very low health, but he's still looking to re-engage this fight. As a TP or backing coming out from Rumble on the other side as they are looking to get their first inhibitor turret. They've got the Baron buff, they'll have some regen. Galio tanking this one out as Caitlyn finally shows up for the party. Rumble does not have the equalizer. Shockwave is still available. As Rumble gonna get 100 to 0 in about half a second. He needs to use that Zonia's. Come on, man. False. We can use the Zonias. What's that? Bro, I don't even know what, don't even know what you're doing at this point. Gotta be using that Zonias there. Everyone knows how to use Zonias, dude. That's how bronze people become gold for a few seconds every game. Here's <laughs> the Dragon Pit instantly deleted over by the red team. They're gonna take huge advantage off of that one. And now the gold lead is cemented. We're going to get 9k exactly in favor of the red team. They have a kill loss, but they've got so many turrets, so many side objectives that are completely controlling the barons and the buffs that in every way, shape, and form, epic memers have just allowed themselves to lose this game. They had the advantage, but they never pulled the trigger. We could have gone in here with all of our ultimates, here with all of our ultimates, here with all of our ultimates, but they never did it. They just gave away dragons. They gave away pressure on lanes. They gave away minion control. They gave away the game, just not pulling the trigger. And now, Broken Sticks, the second they got the, sh the gun in their hands, they are firing at rapid pace and looking to close this one out as soon as possible. At this rate, it's not even going to be a 40-minute game. <laughs> Ka 
Ozark's gonna try and clear away a little bit more ways. He's still seeing at level 14. Comparing that to 15 on Wukong has definitely been a complete turnaround in the levels here as well. The Baron buff still gonna be helping out this siege. Galio on the other side only being stopped by Rumble, but this has removed Rumble. Rumble. Rumble from the team fight as well as Galio. Those are two very major ultimates. If I was on blue side right now, I'd say this is the time I want to fight. Galio may have TP, but so does Rumble. By the time they get in here, their ultimates are probably not going to land to a large group. And you just got to try and close up this fight immediately. Get that bubble going onto the Jace, and you'll have a very strong way in. You got to use that shockwave as soon as you get decent one they cannot just sit here and wait for their turrets to die they've got to make a play but here is galio and rumble they know that the transition has been made over to the bot lane for a 5v5 and honestly this is a good decision by the red team now here goes Fozzie. he's going to get four man shockwave on the sides of the rumble all going to go on the back end a plus is doing a ton of damage and ripping through them as wukong is forced to back out a lot of shields going on to lucian is now causing in a bit of a bad position going to get also by the caitlin but he will survive that one now he's going to jump away from the Whirlwind of Janna slowing her down, but there's not much you can really do to slow down a Janna. So she's going to look for the W, look for the knockup, look for the auto attack, and she'll get that kill. So one for zero. What an amazing shockwave equalizer. The equalizer itself could have been positioned a little bit differently. It was a bit straight line, so it was very easy to juke. If they would have sectioned off the fight and forcing some people to stay forward, such as Wukong, and those to stay back, it would have been much better for the blue team. But here they are underneath their own inhibitor once again. As Lucian, oh my goodness, all he needed to do was cue that one out. He was so close, but he just didn't have the cooldown. Here on the other end, we have Mune to defeat once again going in. Very aggressively, going to get exhausted as Caitlyn is able to help secure down the first inhibitor turret the gates have been opened and with a 10k gold lead that usually spells defeat Kha'Zix has got to start doing something here. He's the only assassin. He's got to remove the Jace. Look, taking a look at the gold distribution, Jace is sitting at 15k, whereas the average for the team is going to be much lower, around 12. So he is a substantial percentage of the gold. Looking on the other side, you're going to have about 11 or so k be the average. So such amazing gold that lead for mercy. the red team. And it's focused very much so on Jace. Mercy. Remove him. Remove their poke damage. Don't just sit there and let them try and get an adaptation situation onto you. Don't let them get damage on you. Just stay where you are. Go in before the poke and get him out of the fight, and you can still win this one, but the 10k gold lead is always a 10k gold lead. The siege will continue once again on the spot lane. They want the inhibitor will open up with those super minions. The ability for them to have complete control over the map by using that six minion over in the bot lane. They can push other lanes as well. Maybe even split and send Galio to the top of the rest of the team goes mid and have the minions in the bot wave. Very simple rotation. Here goes Kha'Zix. He's not able to get anything off of the shockwave. His Galio's going to be a lot off of that ultimate. going to find actually four of them. Two kills already going over. Two broken shards. Is now Lucian going to find himself going down as well. Kha'Zix on the other side. is going to be a perfect ace. And that is easily going to be the game. No fight able to turn this one around. Looking at the ultimates, everything was used. The composition was used on the blue team. But it was just too little too late. They didn't pull the trigger when they had the gun in their hands. And and it's going to be a perfect streak only for Broken Shard. They'll be moving on to the final game and facing the winners of the best of three between Tower Dive Gaming and Epic Memers. Good luck to all those teams. We will see you in just a moment with the first of your best of three from Tower Dive Gaming and Epic Memers. Be right back.